Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. Oh my gosh, we're on episode 15 of Attack on Titan. Last episode, the first part of the Eve of the Counterattack was so freaking good. I was getting such Game of Thrones vibes and I was all here for it because Levi's entered the picture proving he's a freaking badass and just beat the snot out of Aaron. If you weren't an Aaron fan, you definitely got a show last episode because Levi just kicking the snot out of him. And Erwin just calmly and collect collectively being like, this is all part of the plan. And I have a feeling I'm going to like Erwin's character, um, just like I like Pixis' character. Some of you commented way back in like episode 11. You're like, oh, if you like Pixis, you'll like Erwin. And I'm like, you're not wrong. <laughs> I do like Erwin and I want to know more about his character. But man, just setting everything up, getting us, getting us how Aaron has gotten to the scouts, I'm curious what Mikasa and Armin are going to be left doing, if they're going to join the other um, troops, if Mikasa is going to join the scouts as well. I'm curious about all of that. We've got Hanji, we've got Levi, we've got Erwin, we've got Petra, we've got all these other characters that are involved with things, and they have captured Titans. They're actually Titans that have been captured, so I'm curious to know what they're going to do with them, how that all works. There's just so much stuff that, like, the seedlings of plot have been spread. And I, it's like we just start off the second half of the season like on a freaking roller coaster. Let's just barrel through it. And so I'm really excited. I definitely feel like this OP and ED, I'm going to be like breaking apart the rest of the season and going through it because it, there's so much to talk about, y'all. So much. But I, I'm ready. Let's do this. We, I'm ready to start this episode. I've been ready all day. I was like, as soon as I get home and get stuff done, I'm going to sit down and watch episode 15. And here we are. So, Special Operations Squad, Eve of the Counterattack Part 2. So, Special Operations Squad, I'm wondering if that has to do with Levi's group, because it seems like it would, and Aaron joining them. We got some background into how the politics of this society works with the judge, Zachary, um, how that all is affected, and then kind of like the military police's uh, views on there, which I'm curious if any of our main group end up joining the military police, um, how, especially because most of the top 10 were working with Aaron specifically and the others, so I'm wondering if any of them choose to go to the military police and interact with people that have this viewpoint where they're like, no, Aaron needs to die, what their reaction is going to be to it and how they're going to counter that if they do. So that's curious. But I just want to find out what ends up happening, happening with our characters that aren't Aaron because we know Aaron's going with the survey court. We know that that's all taking place. That's already set in stone. Um, Aaron doesn't really have a choice. <laughs> so I'm curious to know what the other characters do as well. So there's that. But yeah, let's do this, y'all. Let's start episode 15. We are going to start that episode here in five, four, uh, let me get this all set up, three, two, one, and let's go. So, yeah, oh my gosh, this episode, there was some, some interesting dynamics happening in here, some very interesting dynamics, especially with Hanji and Aaron, and then Erwin there at the end, like, interesting things being brought up here, very interesting things. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around it because it seems like we, this whole series so far has been pitting the Titans as being these end-all, be-all monsters that can't communicate, that can't think, that are autonomous, they're just here to destroy humanity, and that's all there is to it. Like back, you know, episodes prior, that seemed to be the situation of how we viewed these Titans. But with Hanji and these experiments that she's telling Aaron all about, um, there's so much that's kind of coming to light slowly but surely that's kind of making things a bit murky. A bit murky indeed. Uh, and it's not just talking about cannibals because we'll get into that, that whole cannibalism conversation. Hanji reminds me a lot of, Hanji reminds me of Yosano from Bungo Stray Dogs if you've watched that series. Um, she reminds me a lot of her. Um, just in how she, Hanji and Yosano both are kind of like into that creepy, they have kind of like a morbid, dark humor to them. And it, they kind of view, you know, life and death in certain ways. And 
I like that Hanji has this idea of, I started out hunting the Titans out of hate because they killed my friends. But then I realized that I want to learn more about them. To know. It's kind of like you want to know your enemy. She's like, I want to know more about what these Titans are and how they function because that might be a key to us stopping them from killing our own kind. So, hmm, 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 hmm. Interesting. And her being this catalyst of telling Aaron all about this is so intriguing to me. So intriguing indeed. Um, but I want to go back through this episode. The Special Operations Squad. So the Special Operations Squad, a.k.a. the Levi Squad, is the, the Special Survey Corps members that are tasked with reclaiming Wall Maria. And they're going basically the Old Scout Regiment Headquarters. So I like in this setup... I'm going to pull Crunchyroll up while I'm talking to y'all. I like in this setup that we have this guy, um, oh, was it Oro? Oro? He's like, he's so smarmy. I don't like him very much, but I like that Petra kind of puts him in his place. She's like, you're not doing a good impression of Levi. No. So they're going to this old headquarters, which is basically a castle. And I like that they point out that like, yeah, it looks really fancy, but it's so far away from the wall in the river that it's kind of an inconvenience. They're like, it's useless. Like, it'll it'll work as a headquarters because it's big enough to house all of us. And it has a giant basement that air can be stolen. in. <laughs> that, that's the main thing. The, the main thing, this oversized decoration, as he calls it, is basically a perfect holding place for you. And yeah, Levi is like, I not taking his eyes off of him. And I like that Oro is like, you know, just because... Levi, you know, saved you back there in the courtroom doesn't mean you guys are all chummy. Like, he still doesn't trust you because you are you have the ability to become a titan. He doesn't trust you, and he will probably kill you if you act up. So I like that, that Oro kind of establishes this. But he's just kind of smarmy. I, I definitely like Petra more. Like, Petra's really cool. I Oh, and he slipped. The horse's hoof slipped on the rock. I'm like, how did he bite his tongue? But the horse's hoof slipped on the rock. That's what it was. I really like Petra. She kind of like seems very like to do and serious about everything. And I love that they're at this castle that's been abandoned for so long. And of course it has weeds and grime and everything. And Levi is like, absolutely not. We are going to clean this up. <laughs> and the little thing of him opening the window like Snow White. Amazing. I absolutely love it. That was so great. I That's so awesome. I love it so much. But yeah. Uh, Petra just being like, if you're trying to imitate him, you're not. Yeah, yeah. There's only one Levi in this squad. But I like that Aaron's come to the resolution that, yeah, these are a pack of oddballs. These are all hand-picked people by Levi to be in this squad for various reasons. And they all have the conviction to destroy Titans, much like Aaron. Uh, and that's kind of like the Levi had the twinkle in his eyes back in, in episode 13. But... Here's the thing, too. We get little glimpses of Eli, of Levi's past where he was like, oh, well, he was working with the underground market. So he's kind of an oddball himself. Of course they don't tell us anything more because I know that there's the No Regrets OVA and after season one I can watch it and I've heard it's about Levi and so I'm like, of course they're saving all that for the OVA to tell us. But I, I like this idea of a hodgepodge of characters. Erwin, Erwin is kind of deceptive because he doesn't seem like an oddball. He seems pretty, like Pixis noted, Pixis is like, oh, you seem really straight-laced. But he's not. That's kind of the point. He's not straight-laced. He isn't, he isn't what he seems. And that's really interesting to me. So I'm going to pull up this Crunchyroll episode and uh, cut the sound to it before, uh, so I want to look up that middle thing about the, look like the cult leader is what it's about. So yeah, Levi just wanting everything clean. And I love that he gets on to a, I love that he gets on to Aaron being like, this isn't clean enough. Make it cleaner. It's like, oh, I love that he's a germaphobe. It's it's absolutely wonderful. But so we meet these other characters. So we meet the Levi squad. And the Oro guy, he's kind of a misogynist. He's kind of, I, he's probably my least favorite character so far. And Petra being like, I wish you'd died. Um, but as Aaron goes through and talks about like how many Titans they've killed, all I could think about the entire time was, Aaron, you've killed more Titans than all of them in one single go while you were in your little meat mecca. You, you've you killed like 20. And these guys have killed at the most like 39 over how many years? So the, the value of Aaron in that group can't be understated. 
But there's also, to counter that, that fear that Aaron has of, oh crap, these people could kill me if I act up. And this is, this is that whole line of dialogue that they're going to be in charge of killing me if I lose control. That's what's starting in this episode that's going down a very interesting path. And that's what I'm probably the most excited about by the end of this. So we have Petra Rall, um, 20, 10 Titan kills, 48 assists. So she's more of like a, so going through this roster, she's more of the person to help. She's not necessarily going to kill the Titans, but she's going to help you kill them. Maybe as a distraction or something like that. Uh, Oreo Bozad, 39 kills and 9 assists. And he's the exact opposite. He's going to go for the kill, right? Um, I like that we don't get Levi's count. We don't get it at all. Um, Eld Gein. I like that his hair's in a little clip. Like he has long hair. Eld Gein, 14 kills, 32 assists. He's kind of like Petra. Uh, Gein is. And then we have Gunther Schultz, which is, he's kind of like her too, only 7 kills and 40 assists. Yeah. So we get to this whole thing with, uh, I want to, they establish they're going to put him in the basement because if he turns into a titan, they can control him from there. But as we've heard from Hong, Hanji, um, the basement's also important because there's no sunlight. And if they think that sunlight affects it, they want him there at all times because it makes sense why he was in the basement of the courthouse because they're like, oh, well, they, we don't want him to get charged up while he's there, which may have something to do with all this. I don't know if Hanji's theory holds true or not. Um, but that's so fascinating to me. And then, of course, there's the whole symbolism of he's been in a basement, kept in a basement, and that's like the one place he wants to go to, but it's any basement but that one. So, yeah. Um, and I, I do like that Petra brings up with Levi. She's like, what were you expecting him to be like? And Aaron's like, ah. And Petra's like, oh, you were expecting him to just do whatever he wants because he's strong. She's like, that's not the type of leader he is. And I'm glad that she has that conversation with Aaron because Aaron, up until this point, has been like, well, we'll just go beyond the wall. We'll just do things. And I'm just going to take charge and rely on me and I'll do what I want. He's, it's like Eric Cartman from South Park. He's like, I'll do what I want. And um, Petra's kind of like, no, that's not how everybody that's strong is. Like, there are still rules to follow, and Levi still takes commands from the higher-ups because he believes in that society and that structure. It's very much like the difference between Gojo and Nanami in Jujutsu Kaisen. Because Gojo reminds me of Eren, just like, I have this ability, let me be chaotic and use it. And Levi reminds me of Nanami in being like, no, there's a structure, there's an order, there's a reason for all these things. But here's how we're going to do it. I don't necessarily believe in it necessarily, but I know it's there for a purpose. And so that's the key difference, which I think is really, really interesting. But uh, we get this conversation with Mish and Erwin, and I think that's really interesting. So Erwin is concerned that uh, Mish... Miche, Miche makes the note. He's like, why are we doing this so fast? We're bringing in these... And I'm wondering when you say we're bringing in the cadets. I'm like, oh, is this where Armin and Mikasa get brought in because they're doing this reconnaissance mission? Is that how we're going to get them into the storyline again? Okay. Um, I feel like that was... They're like, you're being hasty. And Erwin's like, no, we've never had this situation before. And the longer we hesitate and the longer we wait, the more the higher-ups are going to get nervous about Aaron's ability again and then we're gonna end up in the same squabble we were before. And this time, when Levi beats Aaron up, it may not get them the results that they want. So Erwin is a really calculating person. He seems like he's always trying to stay one step ahead of the situation, which I find really interesting. And you can see they, they cut to the, they cut to where the Titans are being held, which makes me think that Levi and Erwin were the ones that killed the two Titans. That's what makes me think of it. But anyway, so he's going through this plan and this map. And then I love me. She says, are you using your rhetoric on me too? Like, are you trying to pull the wool over my eyes too? Because I can sniff it out. And then, of course, Erwin's like, oh, well, that's kind of your talent. You can smell stuff out and you're sharp, Mich Miche. And I love it. Not as sharp as yours, though. Oh, and he says, I'll fill you in when the time is right. So it's either, the whole filling in thing is either referring to, one, the whole thing about the basement and Aaron and them trying to get back to Almeria to get it. That's, that's one. Or two, there's something else going on behind the scenes that not even Aaron knows about yet, that it's just Erwin and probably Levi that know about it. 
And so the the whole web of suspicion, like these characters having these alternate agendas. And Erwin's the cat commander of the Scurvy Corps, so I'm sure he's privy to other knowledge that the others aren't. So I'm so curious what's going to happen in all this. But I like that Erwin isn't down here hanging out with the rest of the crew. He's too busy making plans. And Levi is there. They're planning a major expedition 30 days from now. So a month from now, they're going to bring in the fresh graduates and plan an expedition outside the wall. And Aaron looks a little bit concerned about it. And... Yeah, even Gunther's like, they've had to or live through this ordeal. Isn't it, you know, going to be a lot for him? And, of course, Ordu's like, oh, whatever. They were scared and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Levi, though, knowing Erwin, he's put far more thought into this than we have. Yeah, so Erwin is our strategist. He's our planner in all of this. He's staying one step ahead of the game, which I find very, very fascinating. And then they have this hope that presents itself, and that's Aaron. So they ask Aaron, how does this changing into a Titan thing work anyway? Yeah, Gein, Gein, uh, Gein asks him this. And this is where things start to, like, at this point in the episode, when we had the whole part about um, Erwin coming in and revealing that he may have some information that we, the audience, don't know, I was like, okay, that's kind of a red flag. This is red flag number one, though. He says, my memories of it aren't very clear, but it's like being in a trance. I set it off by inflicting self-harm, though. I take my hand like so, and, and then he has it like he's going to bite his hand. Come to think of it, why is this the only thing I know? So the only thing he can remember about the transformation, about becoming a Titan, is how to do it. He knows that you're in like a trance and you're not totally in control, but the only thing he knows is how to activate it. And he's like, why is that? Why do I not know anything else? So something's been drilled into his head. Uh, and, the, and the dad was saying, Dr. Yeager said you have to learn to control this power. But I'm like, is this like a hypnosis thing where it's drilled into him? Is it like an instinct thing? And then Levi's like, well, we already have in the reports what he knows. And it's like, not that she won't try anything, which he's... In this translation, they call Hanji a she. I hope you don't end up dead when she tinkers with you, Aaron. And Aaron's like, who? And then we get Hanji. And just like in Bungo Stray Dogs, as soon as Hanji appears, everybody kicks the, hits the road, right? So I'm curious to know if Levi, he says, you're early. And she said, I couldn't help myself. I'm curious one of two things. One, if Levi knew that Hanji was going to have this conversation with Aaron and Aaron was just nice enough where he'd make her go on and talk all night and that he, you know, being like he has no choice, he would listen to her and that would open up the means for Levi and Erwin or whoever to attack the Titans. That's one. But, um, but two, if he wanted Aaron to hear all this information from Hanji to see how he reacted to it. Because Hanji has been doing these experiments. We find out that these two Titans that were captured were not the first ones to go. She's had, or Hanji's had more in the past that have been experimented on, but these are the two newest ones. So the fact that this has been going on for some time is interesting. We don't get a time frame to know the, the distance between the two groups of Titans being used. And so... I, this is so Day of the Dead, like with zombies. First, they tried communication, and then they tried, like, attacking it and doing pain, and, like, even saying they were going to decapitate it, and then just see what would happen, but they cut the nape, so it died. And then the, the funny thing is, during all of this, Aaron, who normally, up until this point, would have been like, yeah, kill those titans, do everything, which I'm not saying he doesn't still have a bloodlust for titans. He does, I'm sure. But this is the first time we've seen Aaron kind of self-reflexive in this episode and saying, that could be me. And viewing himself as the monster and being like, oh, well, how do I feel about this? That, that's the interesting part is Aaron being like, how do I feel about them stabbing me and poking my eyes out to experiment on me and, and doing this whole experiment? Like, how do I feel about that? Because that could very well be him in that situation if things, you know, go awry. And Hanji has this really interesting discussion about cannibals, about cannibals that exist in humanity. And as soon as they started talking about that, I was like, 
is this the origin of the Titans? Were they cannibals that evolved? Was there a nuclear explosion on cannibals? Like, I don't know. Um, but it is established that these Titans are not autonomous. They're not all just like a hive mind that act unison the same way. They have different personalities and one's introverted, one's extroverted, one reacts to sunlight different than the other. So they are different and unique. And so that is interesting that they're not, because in the first season or the first part of the season, they frame the Titans as being really dumb and kind of autonomous and just a big collective. But Hanji's experiments are proving that no, there's some individuality there. It's maybe muted or not very, you know, apparent, but it is there. And so let's all be friends. The sunlight experiment, I didn't even think about sunlight being a factor, but that's interesting that that's the experiment and one Titan like instantly falls asleep and the other one stays awake the whole time. Again, some individuality there. But yeah, I, what she said, what Hanji says there, I, the fact that Hanji gets so emotional attacking the Titans and doing the experiments, the fact that Hanji gets so emotional on me, it's crazy, but shows the empathy and compassion that Hanji has. And so that's, that's interesting too. And then of course, of course, Aaron's like, I, this is the second part that was like red flag. I was like, Aaron wanted, wanted to know more about the experiments. Like Aaron admits that Hanji and the others are oddballs, that they're all there, but Aaron's like, I want to hear more. So obviously Aaron doesn't have a lot of memories about his experience in Titan form. So he wants to know as much as he can about it. So that's, that's interesting. And then finally, the part that's, uh, the craziest is that she spends, or Hanji spends all night with Aaron, and then the next morning, they come out and find out that the Titans that she that Hanji had captured have been killed. We haven't found who was responsible yet. It was just at dawn because they've already disintegrated. And oh my God, Hanji just screaming and crying at these two burn up Titans was terrifying. Oh my gosh. Both were killed at the same time just before dawn. Whoever did had used the ODM, their maneuver gear to get away. So a team of at least two planned this. Sonny and Bean. Do I include them on my kill account? Do I include them on my kill list? Sonny and Bean, I've got like a list of everybody that's died this season so far. Do I put Sonny and Bean on there? I might put Sonny and Bean on there just for fun. Just for funsies, because they have names. But then, so Aaron, again, again, the sunlight, the whole symbolism, symbolism with the sunlight, they keep Aaron's hood up over his head so he doesn't have sunlight, so he can't be a strong turning into a titan. Just, oh, the symbolism, like rewatching this episode, the symbolism of it all is amazing. Oh my gosh. And then you have Levi coming up beside him with these garrisons. And Aaron's like, how did this happen? And Levi says, let's go. The military police is going to take care of the rest of it. And then Aaron's about to leave, but he just goes to staring. And Erwin says, what do you see here? What do you, who, what do you think the enemy is? Sorry, that was a strange thing to ask. Oh, I got chills. I got literal chills because, and then Levi looking back at him, because yeah, leaving Aaron at the smoking corpses of those as Erwin walks into the sunlight. Like what symbolism, what symbolism? Cause here's the thing. It's like, is Erwin suggesting? He's like, I'm questioning you. You just saw potentially us, him and Levi, you just saw us kill these two titans who do you think the enemy is do you think the titans are still to blame or are we the enemy for killing him how does that how do you frame that does that include you because aaron's in a very awkward place because he's obviously human but he has this titan ability so it's like where and then you just had him and hanji going on about how these titans have some sense 
of identity in some crude, simplistic way, but it is there. And so Aaron wanting to know more about what the experiments revealed, almost like what, what I want to know more about Frankenstein's monster because I'm also Frankenstein's monster, you know? So, oh, and Erwin just planting that seed of like, if you think like how you view the enemy is very important because Erwin's like, you told us you wanted to kill all these Titans. Well, now you've seen these Titans be killed. How does that affect you? What do you think? Who do you think the enemy is? Is it still the Titans? Is it us too? Is it humanity? Oh, there's so much, so much to think about. But that last scene, that was so damn good. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I did want to go back here and look for uh, what it said in the middle parts about, yeah, here we go, about the two things. So, uh, wall lists one, members of a religious organization that, so Wallace. Oh, Wallace. Okay. Members of a religious organization that proselyte, proselytizes within the walls. They worship the walls as God, refusing to allow any changes to them, even for defensive purposes. That's interesting. The idea of people revering the wall as a God. Oh, that's so freaking cool. Because that's suggesting, like, when the Colossal Titan knocks down the wall, like, how does that affect everything? That the wall is like a deity. Oh, because it's like their savior protecting them from the outside. Interesting. Interesting. And then uh, Wallace, too. Since Wall Maria's fall, their numbers have rapidly increased, as has their influence. So that would be the priest that was at the trial being a Wallace. Yeah, because, I mean, in times of panic, what are you going to look to? And they're they're revering the walls as their sanctuary and their savior. So, yeah, sure. Of course they view it like that. But, oh, that's so, that's so interesting. So, yeah. Special Ops, op Squad, Levi Squad. Man, freaking cool. I, this was a really interesting episode. I feel like these last two episodes, episode 14 and episode 15, have just been a lot more low-key, introducing us to Levi's squad, introducing us to Levi and these characters. Erwin is so freaking fascinating. Like, after this episode, I'm like, there's so much... I, I You know, when we first inter got introduced to Erwin, I was like, oh, he just seems like a like disassociated person. But I'm like, no, there is so much going on under the surface, and I want to know more. I, don't spoil me, but I'm so excited to learn more about Erwin. Oh, my God. And then, obviously, Levi and the others and Hanji... Hanji, Hanji. So yeah, I'm gonna add Sonny and Bean to my kill list for season one. R.I.P. Sonny and Bean. But yeah, hmm, interesting, interesting indeed. And that also asks the question of if if Aaron ends up being captured and experimented on, then who is he gonna view as the enemy? Is he still gonna think the Titans are enemy, or is he gonna view the military as the enemy? interesting stuff because you know the military police was talking about dissecting him but it was for the greater good so should Aaron have considered the military police an enemy or an ally mm -hmm. this is all getting complicated and I love it I'm so intrigued because it's it's starting to question the morality of everything and revealing that this whole story is not black and white this whole episode is showing that the whole Titan situation is not a black and white situation that there there are slowly like slowly inklings of gray coming into the mix which I'm fascinated by so yeah please don't spoil me but I want to know your reactions to the episode uh, what you thought about episode uh, Levi's uh, cameo as Snow White and um, what you guys think of the special ops squad but yeah um, next time we'll go to episode 16 and go through that but man we're, this next this latter part of season 2 is getting really really good and I'm excited to see where it goes to from here. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back next week with more Attack on Titan. Bye.